at cyber here you have different options available sometimes we want to the search specifically we want to make some constraint like uh, the text should be case sensitive or unicode or uh, it should follow the regular expression and all we'll just give a simple um, text that is cyber because i know we'll get something okay so we have given one keyword now this keyword okay we can use for the search how can we can use for the search keyword search right we'll go we'll add the keyword and then we will go to the search keyword okay entire case or selected only we'll go to the entire case that is uh, the day 2 01.pz01 image file and we'll start so here also there are so many options available we can search it everywhere search extension we don't want to only search the doc file or pdf file we'll just go by default so now it will search you can see at the bottom there is a message searching files folders and files lack okay in this image file okay and what it is searching it is searching a keyword cyber if any file is having that particular word okay we'll get the result is it searching for unallocated clusters also we have given so many options so it is taking time but it will search and find out all the uh, in all the files folders where we have checked and give us the result okay we can see all the files meanwhile can you please uh, once again the uh, mr spain the flags like just just the quick uh, introduction of all the flags like dl dm sm ow yes 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 yes, yes, yes. I'll, i'll explain again this dl stands for deleted files if it is set to y it means the file was deleted from suspected storage media dm is for date mo uh, modified if there is the any date mo uh, modification done by the uh, means unintentionally or due to the problem in system whatever is the reason this flag will be set to y sm is for signature mismatch the signature of the file that is extension dot pdf is changed to uh, dot doc or any other change uh, um, uh, change in the extension is done then this sm file will be set to y ow is for overwritten files if the same file if if any file was written in the disk and then deleted and at the same space again new file was written then that file is considered as the overwritten file pp is for password protected if there is any file which is password protected by the user then the flag will be set to y sg is for stenographed if there is any file that is stenographed and is available in your image then the, for that particular file this flag will be set to y so we have six okay. flags available and uh, okay. it is in taking case, time it, yeah in this case it means uh, if we if we consider the point number the serial number 3 Yes, where the and DM one, both are thing, one one more thing like this uh, one more thing is all the red color already shows for the deleted file if the text color is red by default this file files are deleted okay so if we consider the serial number 3 where dl and dm both are set to y it means the file spring email verification master.war that was yeah, yeah. Uh, earlier modified by the user and then yeah. again it was deleted yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. And once you uh, uh, you said the overwrite file miss O W uh, the file content was overwritten by some other file. So yes. So the file 
which is the file which is listed here is the previous That's file or this is the file which has been which has been you know uh, written again the uh, hello this is one written file means the file is uh, at the same file uh, the same uh, space this file is uh, newly file is written Okay. okay. Because overwritten means we cannot get the previous data. There is no okay. information about the previous data. Whatever is available right now, we can that we can get that only. Not until unless uh, until unless some of the uh, portion of the previous file is stored yes, in some yes, yes. other location. Yes, yes. That's how we can get through the carving. Yes, yes. Carving or sla uh, slack space. Slack space. Okay. By using slack, we can get that. Okay. Yes. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much. And then gallery is there. This is the default view where we can see in the grid. Ma'am, what is PP and SZ? PP is sir password protected file. If there is any password protected file, let me check because is here we can actually uh, anti forensic file. We can search for this particularly. Yo, okay, this is also done. Meanwhile, when we were discussing this key. Uh, we, uh, for which we have searched the entire data uh, image data is actually total hits 41 means 41 times cyber keyword was found now let's see the result In all this file, actually cyber keyword you can see name or or in hacks hexadecimal file values you can see the text was cyber security force content wherever in used unused unallocated factor also you can see whenever there is a match through the keyword search we are able to find out. and let's say this image is useful for me okay i can p8 dot uh, jpeg file uh, jpeg uh, jpg file that is available in this path so i can just go to the table view and i can just uh, export this file and you i can use this file if it is actually useful for me then picture search after keyword search we can search for the pic pictures also right if there is any image let's go to the pro and then go to the if there is any picture that is available that is exactly in, uh, not available inside the pdf or inside anywhere else inside the uh, file but any jpeg file any png file any Mm, a specific file format which belongs to the image is available then in gallery whenever we select the gallery we can see all the images here timeline timeline analysis as i um, explained uh, in my earlier session that through the timeline analysis we can find out the files for example created between this to this date let's uh, select from 1st july to 8th august we want to find Uh, we want to find normal file also deleted file also we want to display modified date created it's it's up to you you can change because when you are doing analysis we, you will use different permutation combinations you can get maximum uh, set of data right and here advanced option do you want only to uh, get information about the files which were having uh, which are having time anomaly or or signature uh, mismatch anomaly or both so we'll go with the both and when we will uh, complete this we will get a chart i'll show you when i click here entire okay it is performing the timeline analysis for the given inputs and when uh, it is over it will show a graphical uh, yes this is the chart and this chart is actually represent all the data that uh, that was actually created or modified between the 1st july from 1st july to uh, 3rd august 
you can see all the information and you can see there are different colors yellow red purple so all this color denotes different meanings for example if the uh, for particular file if the color is green it means a normal file there is the file is not deleted there is no time anomaly there is no signature mismatch if the if the file is red like here this file it was actually deleted that's why the color is shown red you can see it was deleted on this date right 18th july it so all the details see if there is any signature mismatch file so everything is available here you can just click you can see the details so all these things are actually important for us when here i can show you how you can do but i can uh, uh, there i can show the utilities available within the tool here we are ex i am explaining one of the tool available for the this forensic but uh, we know in case is there autopsy is there uh, os for uh, forensics is there and then um, uh, in uh, ftk is there so there are so many tool with different set of capabilities with different set of features okay so we can uh, use more than one tool and we can get maximum output now i'll show you for example if you want to see only the deleted file so we can go to the table and we can see all the deleted file this will just filter everything and we, if you want to recover as i um, said uh, explained earlier also just need we need to select and export this will just um, recover that particular file okay this file you 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 were not able to get this file you had the pen drive you had the disk drive but you can't see what is the content but through with the help of the tool you can actually get the deleted files you can recover the deleted files and you can use that uh, you can use the content you can read the content so this is the power of the forensics okay now you can see there are so many files overwritten file signature mismatch file so all these things are actually when you analyze a case we try to recollect reconstruct the scene all everything not only uh, the disk you try to relate uh, the data you have um, if you have the live data for the particular case you try to uh, correlate each and everything and then you prepare a summarized report for your case right now we have not done but for this you, if you have any summary you can write that and append that you can explain that and then you have this report which will be actually along with the documentation you need to present to the court of the law court of and uh, anything i'm missing bookmark we have done search by folders by selected data we can do and uh, steganography file right now we don't have a steganography file but if you have or if you can create a steganography file it will show you that this file but this tool cannot actually show the hidden data but it it can identify that this file is a steganograph and easily you can uh, get the meaning because why there will be some steganography file it means somebody wants to hide the data the real data and one very important thing that uh, i would like to cover in demonstration is anti forensic detection okay sometimes when we see the first in first glance when we open the probe we are not able to see exactly so in that case we can go to the anti forensic files um, sub menu and we can select all activity based tool based because there are so many tools available in the market for steganography also if there is no single tool through which you can create a steganograph tool there are so many different tools and a one single tool cannot identify each and every tools output that is also the constraint so there is a limitation so this tools if the anti forensic uh, files created with the help of this tools or by using these activities the software uh, the software is capable enough to detect this so let's search the entire 
and try to find out is there any such kind of file exists in our image it is searching for any uh, such kind of file if it is available then we can see here okay so here we have let's see if there are any password protected file yes we have one password protected file so how we know that this is password protected file i'll just export this file this file actually i have created today morning <laughs> just for the demonstration purpose so day to demo will export successfully exported will again go to this this day to demo now we have recovered this file because it is password protected when i click here okay i can't do anything without the password i am stuck to this page third party software can be used to crack this password yes yes as i said there is a limitation there is means you can do so if you know the password you can open you need to crack the password you if you have password cracker um tool in that case this this tool this tool it can identify the anti forensic files right but uh, for um, to crack that you need uh, either uh, you should have uh, some knowledge about the case or you have some in intuition that this may be the password uh, or any anybody can provide you password then it's okay otherwise you need a tool to crack the password so can we so, see the content of this file i mean maybe the hexadecimal or the binary values just without opening this file inside the cyber check itself like in in case of other softwares For example, if we uh, wish to see the content of it. No, no. But for example, for example, here I have an image, right? So here you can't see that, but the see you can see no picture file. You can see that the image file is there. The hexadecimal will show you that there is some uh, that this is a doc file uh, and some data is there. All these are data, okay? But you but can't. Sometimes I think the in in case software because I I had used in case software in year two thousand five. Yes, yes. So yes. Uh, once you uh, you know click on that file, uh, you could see yes, the, yes. What, what is exactly inside in hexadecimal format. So somehow we can guess because we know hexadecimal system and the binary system also. So yes, that yes. Help uh, just to no, find. No, actually, uh, yes, yes. Here also, if you have not, if you have deleted a file, delete. If you have deleted file in that case also here, you can see there is one video file. You can see the content also. Mm-hmm. And you can recover this file. This was deleted when you uh, when you uh, taken the ima uh, image image uh, forensic image of this uh, suspect media. It was not possible to get this file. It does this software only check for uh, those stenographic file which is using image as a container or the audio files as a container also can be searched. Every everything image audio video now uh, we have seen now this is video audio and. No, uh, if it is set uh, for uh, hiding some content as a as a container. Yes, 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 yes. It will, it will. Be. Yes, yes. If hiding some data, uh, this is it. Uh, means you are uh, asking about that data is hidden, no? Yes, if yes. It means it is a stenograph file. Am I right? Yes, yes, yes. So it means okay. uh, if if the SG SG flag is Y, it means yes. we can further look into into these files. Is if uh, if yes yes correct if S G flag is set to Y, then you can just like password protected. You you know that this is password protected. Something is there that I should know. Okay, this file is very important, but you need a password cracker. Uh, for stenography file also, you can see that this is stenography file. If say if it is set to Y, and you. Uh, you can understand that there is some data that is hidden, maybe a image, audio, anything. No, that that is that is clear. If that the flag is set to white, means that yeah. that uh, audio or video file yes, is also yes, containing yes, some yes, hidden yes. data. And yes. one more thing, one more thing, can we can we use uh, other languages while searching the files? Like uh, you you are typing the keywords in English language. What about if I write something in Hindi or uh, maybe some other language? In that case, what will happen? 
multilingual. Right now, it is not multilingual. It doesn't provide multilingual support. But so I, can, uh, I can see the language. Something language is written over there. Uh, uh, Miss, before the help. So, but it is not that much. Uh, there are options. There are options for. Uh, uh, if I will show you, there are few options available right now also. Uh, for the keyword for searching also, but actually um, not that much. Like Unicode, like Unicode, because the version is 6.0. Regular expression you you can give, for example, email at the rate uh, like this, or um, uh, uh, there is some uh, regular expression things you W uh, uh, backslash W uh, like this for a word word search. Regular expression you can use, Unicode you can use, you can use that uh, the case sensitive uh, uh, keyword you want to search. This type of things you can do. But uh, Mr. Uh, uh, different languages are not supported at the moment. They are working on this, but uh, right now uh, actually yeah, all of us know India is not that much uh, advanced in uh, cyber forensic. This is one of the uh, you can say uh, Indian designed and developed uh, tool for uh, the forensic. Um, but this is very good because because I I can compare it with other softwares like FTK also in case or Kane or Kali Linux. I mean Kali Linux is a different uh, thing, but I find that most of the options are given in in this software, so it is very good. It means basic basic things if you want to learn if you want to do from for for uh, uh, means for when we are starting. Okay, it is a very good one. But as I said. Because it is um, it is our uh, made in India. If we are not that much um, in technology. We are not that much advanced when we compare uh, like in case or uh, to um, um, FTK. They are more advanced. Yes. Here we can see that it is password protected, but in case of uh, FTK analyzer, there is a provision uh, through which you can um, get or uh, crack the password. Mm -hmm. But up to a certain level only. But yes, yes, yeah, up to a certain level only because the, the, it uses the dictionary. Uh, um, up to a certain level only, uh, FTK analyzer also can crack the path, password, not each. Mm -hmm. So after this, I wind up my session. If you ha have any queries, anything, you can uh, work on your own. You can exercise. I'll share one exercise sheet also with all of you. Uh, you can do, you can, you can explore cyber check suit, uh, okay. And if you face any problem, if you have any query after the five days online workshop, also you can mail uh, and we'll try to answer you if possible, uh, if you can. Okay, we'll try to resolve your queries. Okay? So, uh, as per our schedule, uh, this was the end of the morning session and. Um, after uh, this, we have at 3:30. 3:30, uh, um, Dr. Omvir Singh sir from uh, Ministry of Information Technology. He will take the session on overview of anti forensics. So let's take a lunch break. A lunch break, and we'll continue. Um, and I request all of you please join the meeting at least five to ten minutes before, so that we can um, start our session sharp at 3:30. Okay. Any queries? Any um, anything that you want Madam. to ask? Yes, sir. Hello, madam. Uh, yes, madam, sir. It was the one dot question that I want just want to mention. One dot. Sorry, I can't hear you, sir. Please, please repeat. Please. Repeat. It was the one dot question that I also uh, that I just want to point out. Uh, just I want to share with you. It was the one dot question. No, he's telling he it's wonderful session. Oh, sorry. <laughs> okay, thank you so much. Sir. Thank you. We need this kind of appreciation from all of you are from a very good institution, very reputed organization. So it it will motivate us to learn, to explore, and um, to share our knowledge, whatever we know with all of you. Thank you. And so what's much. the cost of this particular software? The cost is uh, actually, sir. It depends. Uh, actually, uh, the cost is uh, varies based on the warranty period and all. And uh, last till last year, it was uh, per uh, per CD along with the hardware key that is dongle. 
uh, I think it was around 1.5 lakhs. Around 1.5 lakhs. It's still, that is cheaper if you compare the other. Yeah, yeah, very, market. very, very. Last because year. because last year, if you compare the same uh, with um, FTK, FTK analyzer, uh, that um, FTK analyzer cost was around, not exactly around, uh, around seven lakh. Mm -hmm. It was. So it's a perpetual license. License, yes, sir. Means uh, you can. Um, Proprietary license is available. Yes, you can use along with the warranty. That proprietary license they provide. This is actually designed and developed by the cyber forensic team of CDEC Trivindrum, CDEC Thiruvananthapuram. They have designed and developed. They provide proprietary license hardware key. They provide you the dongle is there. Without that, nobody can work. No software key, nothing. But uh, now they are working. Actually, they are in, uh, improving their software. Lot of uh, um, uh, in last two, three, uh, last three years they have uh, revised from cyber check suit four to cyber check suit six. So in last three years, three revisions they have given, and uh, they are working on software keys also. Maybe in the next release they will give software keys also, and they are working. True imager and um, uh, true back. Uh, um, true traveler is there. True traveler is a complete, complete solution. But they are also government uh, organization. But they need money. <laughs> as, all, as all of us need money to survive. So uh, they Madam. need to. Yes, sir. Yes. Madam, uh, I have a short question. Uh, mm -hmm. And I want to ask you, with your mm -hmm. kind permission, that Madam, uh, when we create uh, any data, in whether whether it will be it is any cluster or it is any in in any area of a particular CD disk or drive, uh, then Madam, when we after using it, I erase, we erase it, then it should be clear. Uh, the cluster will be free from allocation and the <coughs> sorry. The cluster will be free from allocation, or the sector will be free from allocation. That is the basic idea of uh, basic idea. But ma'am, when you are recovering the data, what is the logic behind the creation of the of that recovery? When because yes. we are uh, freeing it, and what is the logic that we are getting back? It? Because sir, when you delete the data, it is the pointer is there in your uh, NTFS or whatever file system. Um, is uh, available in your operating system, FAT, NTFS, EAGRI, whatever is used by the operating system. So there is a pointer available till in the same space, there is no overwritten data, no new file comes in the same space. The older file will remain there. The pointer will be there, the data will be there, but it will show as uh, the unallocated space means it is free to Mm, create the new data. It will give that kind of uh, information to the operating system that okay, this is a free space, unallocated space. You can create the new data for here. But as I said, the data will be there till it is not till the same uh, till the new file is not created at the same space till it is not overwritten. So data will be there. So data, okay. No, so no. Madam, data when, will be when, when you will not be able to get the data if you wipe the data. If you erase the data, there are tools available to wipe to wipe the storage media. If you wipe the data, what when we uh, purchase a fresh uh, storage media, what we get in in every sector either zero or one is written, right? So if if yeah. if you can make the same kind of, uh, if you can make the same kind of, uh, um, uh, if you can erase the data completely by using the uh, software or using any uh, tool, okay, or uh, you can um, just wipe the data, you, you can make it fresh 0, 1, 0, 1 bit by bit data, then only there is no chance to get anything. Otherwise, if you have simply deleted, even if you de delete any file, it is in our uh, recycle bin. Something uh, means deletion. Only deletion is not e erasing your data. 
if you wipe out Sorry. if you write just a zero yeah. and one like a fresh media then only there is no chance so madam if it is done if you do format then only hello formatting also so many times there are quick formatting also there is different type of formatting uh, um, exist in the com computer okay so when you wipe the data then there is no chance but in formatting also there is a chance in a standard way uh, um, uh, i haven't done but in a standard practice if you uh, till eight or eight times you have not formatted any uh, storage media there is a chance there is a possibility that you will get the data so madam data don't delete data don't delete permanent only its overlap yeah 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 it was said yesterday also in one of the presentations that you know if you want to delete something you cannot actually delete but you can overwrite it multiple number of times so that it yes, uh, yes. you know it's taken as a junk and, yes, and just one last question ma'am i need to ask suppose now uh, at a particular age you've reached and uh, now if i want to change my profession and i want to come into uh, you know cyber forensic expert or something is it possible is the government allowing us for that uh, to change uh, and um, uh, what if yes if yes then how how can how to go about so right now you are you are in which profession ma'am Ma'am, I am a teacher. I am CS teacher only. Uh, but uh, you know, when I just wanted to learn something more about the security, so I when I joined this, I mean, it is maybe I don't, I may not change profession. I'm just asking if I need to study no. more about it. It's very Thank interesting. You. Yeah, it is very good, and this is uh, actually the objective of our P, uh, FDP program. Very happy to hear you that you. Uh, you are now interested to work in this field you want to learn you want to explore this field and uh, i am also um, not that much uh, not uh, working from last i can't say from last 10 years i'm working in this field but yes uh, we can uh, we can do so many things in like here in cdac we have projects related to the uh, forensics so we can uh, if we are interested we we show that okay i can do this thing i can learn i can explore then uh, we get this type of opportunity to work in such kind of project and um, for uh, i think um, government sponsored projects are also there by uh, dst and all you can work on those projects also and if you are not doctorate then you can work as a A scholar, research scholar in a good university, means in reputed in university, and explore um, the research aspect of uh, digital forensics. I am also doing uh, the same along with my job. I am also basically hmm. because I think more hands-on that you get, more real-time projects you work on, and uh, yes. the experience. Yeah, that counts to the experience. But basically, I want. is it possible is it possible at this point of time to yeah uh, it is possible it is possible there are so many certifications there are so many courses you can uh, join the courses you can means uh, get the certificates you can you can you can use in your um, profile you can add this things no you can add this technical things and you can go ahead no problem you can do so that is counted you mean this Thank you so much. Thank you to all of you, and we'll meet again at three uh, thirty sharp. So I'll jo uh, and please join bef um, before uh, five to ten minutes. Okay. okay. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Hello, when is the meeting going to start? Hello. So yes, ma'am. Uh, from three thirty. Okay. okay.
Good afternoon to all of you. Welcome to the second session and uh, in second half, uh, we are waiting for uh, Dr. Omvir Singh sir uh, and he is about to join. So within few minutes, uh, so I will take session on overview of anti-forensics. So just wait for another uh, two, three minutes and so I will join. Excuse me, ma'am. It is three forty now. Hello. 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 Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Ma it is three forty now. Is, oh, sorry. Actually, uh, sir, um, is having uh, some problem. He was actually uh, traveling or something. So he, I just called him. He said. <laughs>
गुड आफ्टरनून सर सॉरी सर वी कांट हियर यू I forgot to send you the profile. May I send now? Yes, sir. Please. Thank you. I already I am logged. Me, but if you can share. <laughs> if if you have used it, it is okay. So. No worry. Okay. So it is a great privilege to uh, welcome sir Omvir the Omvir Singh sir. He um, served as uh, serving as di director scientist F at Ministry of Technology and Information Technology Government of India. he worked in certain also and uh, sir is having a vast experience in cyber forensic analysis of digital evidence and uh, he has worked in several projects uh, delivered talks on cyber forensics to law enforcement agencies engineering colleges bank officials and other firm uh, forums associated with information security log analysis mobile forensics and uh, he is having a specialization in uh, giac certified forensic analyst he, he is gs sorry he is gcfa signed uh, forensic analyst and uh, cyber forensic analysis of digital evidence and mobile phone uh, forensics and uh, sir uh, sir is having long list of uh, working experience he is served in certain and ministry of uh, information technology um, as scientist app so i will not waste time and uh, i would like to call sir and sir please share your presentation and um, please uh, um, start we are waiting for you okay thanks kanti and uh, good afternoon everybody and first of all i apologize due to some local problem at my home there is some uh, uh, electricians are working on some poles there some new line is being laid and it is happening since 간디아 I am not able to find how to share my screen Okay sir let me see I don't know if facility is given to me or not No sir you are presenter only Which key you use camera mute share tray more actions Yes content sir on top of the screen there is one up arrow on top of uh, the screen there is one up arrow share content on top of screen right side sir no or uh, you can do one thing sir you can share your sir on the top of the screen and next to the next to the leave button there will be the up arrow sir next to the leave button there is up arrow next to the leave button there will be arrow button top arrow top arrow up arrow yes mm. i open through browser probably it is through application i have to go no 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 need no need to uh, are you can share your uh, slides sir i i open anything is fine sir okay slide will be shared but how that is the right now i am on my slides um kindly send him the screenshot it will be easier for him madam in the meeting options you change it to the presentation madam there you can change in meeting options 
already present here. Mm, meeting now. Control Shift and E, sir. Control Shift and E. Control Shift E. No, nothing is coming here. I think uh, I am logging along and again logging in. That will be better. Probably, and I will go through my meeting app. That will be better. Okay. Yes, sir. The same thing coming. Sir, is there any problem, sir? Is, are you able to see my presentation? That is the only thing that is the problem there. Or, sir, you can share your presentation to me uh, with WhatsApp and I'll um, just uh, change the sliders. Enter the screen and book. Everything is there, but only. Sir, after the spike symbol, there is in one rectangle, one arrow symbol is there. In top corner, you are selling that uh, in in my I am using because what I sir, see there. Sir, browser also it will be there, sir. In browser also it will come, sir. Next to the link. Yeah, through browser also I am the same screen I am getting. Uh, sir, sometimes it is at the bottom or. Bottom also, sir. Bottom also. Sir. Hello, sir. Sir, such, yeah. sir. There is a one tab uh, besides the microphone tab, and it is saying open share tab tray. So you can just click on it. And it will ask you to share. Yes, Are you sir, able now, to see now? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. 
Okay, good. <laughs> Somehow, some minimized window is was with me that was showing this uh, rectangle with arrow. What you people told. Okay. Right. So with some difficulties, we are back and uh, today my topic is anti forensics and uh, which is uh, unusual to the task what I do because we do forensic investigation and not the anti forensics. But definitely this is the field uh, as a forensic analyst. We must know that what is anti forensics and how people do it. As well as uh, what are the tricks that we can avoid? Uh, I will discuss a little bit of that one, but uh, if time permits. So we will start. I hope that uh, my slide is visible to everybody and uh, they are able to listen me. Yes, sir. It is visible. Please start, sir. Yes, okay. Sir. Now, first of all, we will discuss today's scenario that what is happening there. A few points I have put there that. Today we know that we have enormous computing power even, even within our mobile phones and laptops also. And uh, their cost also very less. So efficient and effective power on information processing has made computer the most important tool for data processing. As a result, we are processing more and more data as well as we are able to store more and more data in lesser cost. And internet, which everybody is using nowadays, I will say that everybody means that uh, most of the Indian population, except uh, few deprived ones, so they are using. It is a major channel of human communication nowadays. And trend is nowadays that uh, we people find that uh, mobile signal is low, but if we are connected to Wi-Fi at home, then we don't, nowadays we try to make a VIP calls over anything, maybe Skype or WhatsApp or anything and we like to nowadays because it is much more uh, pretty voice clear voice and all is there so that is the situation has come now that we are less relying on the connectivity through uh, cellular mode but more over wi-fi or internet mode nowadays uh, due to this uh, what is happening is that covid 19 pandemic with this pandemic we are virtually going towards a virtual society and you know very well that uh, nowadays we are not uh, much moving from home but everybody is connected through uh, video calls and then discussing and all is happening here. whether uh, earlier we used to make uh, video calls to like uh, us and all us you can uh, distant call but nowadays even if you are in neighbor people are making video calls so here of people's daily activities shopping services if I am your urban company or many things other if any service you need you you can request and they are so all these are coming without any contact and uh, it is happening that uh, nowadays all these services internet banking online shopping g2c e-governance services video conferencing apps just now we are using it nowadays that uh, in even classes students classes office meetings and uh, ladies also that uh, kitty parties they are using these these mode and your classes but all thing is okay going on but uh, it is not so easy everything there are some problems there that uh, there are behind that uh, so much work has been done but uh, some persons are there who see opportunity this one they want to just uh, explore the situation and make fool and then try to grab money or they basically want to fool that one. So ICT is one of the major enablers. For these individuals also, they try to commit crime and try to escape apprehension by the police or the other law enforcement agencies. And uh, this is the reason that cyber crime investigation using cyber is the largest challenge for the law enforcement agencies today. And uh, the what tricks they play or try to play little bit. Uh, I will discuss that one uh, due to that. I wanted to expand my presentation today to a higher level, but uh, 
today's problem <laughs> i could not do that one and if, just i was telling kanti singh that uh, i have to leave my house and come to my relative's house to give this presentation so what is anti forensics and purpose of anti forensics basically is the work what as analyst or an examiner we do to make it much more difficult or almost impossible so make it hard for the analyst to find you because see crime has been done by someone who is suspect there and uh, purpose of forensic investigation is that we want to reach first the system used to carry out that crime and then ultimately through the person who has done that one so they want to make this task difficult and overall next is they make it impossible for the analyst to prove they found you because okay some somehow we have try to find trying to trace back but uh, they try their effort is that it has almost become impossible that even if we found that they can prove yes this is the right person who has done this one so here attempt for removal or hiding evidence to mitigate the effectiveness of forensic investigation is the sole purpose of anti forensics this is one definition given by dr marcus rosers from purdue university usa and for you i have taken this one that attempts to negatively affect the existence amount and or quality of evidence from a crime scene or make the analysis and examination of evidence difficult or impossible to conduct so that is a one not cell he has given clear definition of the anti forensics that uh, the person who has carry out the crime his attempts is towards that uh, task make the task almost impossible or very very complex and difficult and it happens it can happen on every stage but it starts from the digital device or, or digital gadget used to carry out the crime and then after that uh, to make the extraction of evidence much more complex or difficult as the analysis so that we are not able to trace back regarding tools so many tools are there that anti forensics tools are there and uh, they are used and uh, just i will not list the tools maybe little bit i will come there but uh, that is not the purpose but what are these tools basically the tools that limits and or corrupts evidence that could be collected by an investigator police goes to the scene of crime and their task is that first identify the system used who has which system has been used to carry out the crime and after that they have to capture the evidence what a volatile evidence then uh, non volatile evidence so these tools basically limits that whatever evidence is there it is not available or make it corrupt that it even if it is available it is of no use for that purpose they can do any sort of things what we will we'll discuss today and in that only that data heading is uh, one trick that they can to do and data heading generally it is not so much big thing that uh, nowadays uh, what data heading techniques are being used almost uh, many of them or if not all they can be but uh, if the technical data heading is that totally different we will discuss that one and distortion is that data is distorted corrupted and uh, here nobody can uh, take it back in the original form so in that way that uh, we are not able to do much of that data they can exploit the limitations of known and used forensic tool i will discuss one slide is there regarding that one see all these cyber forensic tools they are well known okay mostly that good tools are globally are being used everybody knows but these tools are not uh, free from uh, bugs or vulnerabilities and it is there so these bugs and vulnerabilities can be exploited even the and uh, if somehow the forensic work station is online so they try to compromise the forensic work station remotely and then they carry out i will discuss little later also that uh, they exploit it and then they use it for their own purpose 
such tools they can work on any popular operating system because windows or, or linux and maybe that mac and all are there can be it can be anything and it that there and uh, i told you already that uh, it is starts from seizing and after that one task is there imaging and then analysis so in uh, on prior or post in any level these anti forcing tools can be used if they have the access but primary access uh, primary mostly is, i will say the 98% so it is the this digital device which is being seized and we have the, they do all these tricks after that uh, all these carrying out is not uh, so much easy because uh, mostly self like very safe and uh, outside does not allowed and uh, one more thing is there we always tell that that cyber forensic bug station must be isolated or it should be never online if it is online then it is for some purpose like updating of the version of tool or patching of the operating system or like that it is required sometime but some way should be adopted there that you download the next version or patch in a pen drive or like that and then use it but try that it should not be online if it is online then the chance of remotely compromising or hacking are more and then manipulation can be done so most clearly that uh, anti forensic tricks are played with the digital device which is was earlier in control of the suspects but later it is seized first of all is the time stamps and uh, use of time stamp first we have to understand that uh, as a forensic analyst timeline of events is very much useful to us and uh, what we do is that uh, we know the Uh, suppose the time is available to us that the time uh, the crime was done from this time to this time so time span is available to us and uh, what we do is always there that uh, all the files which were used during that period we simply take into see, see open that one we arrange them in increasing order and then see the timeline of events or activities of the suspect or what they have done so in this way we can simply you just think of that uh, a particular anti forcing tool is downloaded and then it is installed and used and, and then they uninstalled it as well as wiped something like that is happening so it is really very big thing that if somebody is able to do so many things so here regarding time stamp they simply disable the time stamp because it is very much useful in investigation and for the what they do because for their knowledge there is a window registry key there and its uh, name is uh, i have given here that high h key current user software microsoft windows current version explorer user assist so this key is having two registry keys and which are manipulated i will not give much details here so that user activity is not logged in by windows simply means that if any logs are created or it is capturing so it will not be there also they are the user access logs are also disabled and for this i have given that one utility is there fs utility which download it and then the disable last access also so this these are the ways that uh, time stamps of the files that when it was last time open and all it is simply disabled and it is not available it will not time stamp will not change i hope everybody knows about time stamp that windows or linux or most of the they maintain three time stamps of the all the files okay and uh, these are created then last modified at the last accessed so depending on what they have done these time stamps will change and that are the time stamps we used to make the timeline of the events there another way is that uh, anti forgery it is in encryption encryption is well known to everybody i hope that uh, that is not known in computer everybody knows it so what is there for encryption the data in in files or entire disk can be encrypted there and encryption you know that uh, there is a tool which is downloaded i have given a small name truecrypt is a free tool also there 
it can be downloaded and it can be used. But besides that, most of the operating system they have built-in facility for entire disk encryption. Uh, BitLocker is very famous for Windows, which is the most used system. And Linux is having LUKS, Lux. Mac, your Apple systems are also having fine file vault. And the, these are the built-in utilities with these in operating systems available there. And I was discussing TrueCrypt. It is a very versatile tool for encryption and very useful as well as all it is having big facility. So here that uh, if you, somebody is using, they can make a container on the hard disk and it can store the data which you want to encrypt and place there. OK, and this container can be open if you have the key, otherwise you can you cannot. And this is definitely a tool, use of TrueCrypt or any other tool for is it anti forensics. Similarly, some other uh, tricks are there for encryption. And uh, you know, well, digital signature is one the way encryption is used. So anything, uh, if you are these are posted to digital signature is used or PGP, pretty good privacy key is used for uh, encryption. So these are really for. Uh, but problem with that is that uh, anyway, and and this uh, password breaking tools or and unencrypted tools are available, but these require huge processing power. And almost I'll say that uh, it is almost uh, impossible to take, and the data cannot be recovered. So encryption is very strong generally, and uh, if any data is there encrypted, mostly it cannot be broken unless you have the right encryption key or decryption key and then the right tool is available to you and then you can do basically it can be done by the owner only or the recipient with whom they are sharing these tool as well as the key but one thing is there when encryption is being used if suppose we are reaching this hello is there any question? Somebody is calling. Hello. Please others mute. I think uh, someone has just unmuted their mic. No question. No. Okay. So I was telling you about encryption. That uh, if suppose computer is already already on and. Uh, user is using a file which is encrypted, but uh, because he is using so he is decrypted. And in that particular situation, if the computer sees live, then encryption is of no use because we already it is available to us and we can simply use the live forensics there and uh, we can capture entire data. So to avoid such things, generally they what they do is they create a lock disk in saver with lesser time. So, uh, so encryption is useless while running and live funds can be used. So always they apply a lock disk in saver there because as soon as they suppose seizing or police series there and uh, within no time, I think maybe two minutes or like that, it will be on and then system will be locked and they are not going to share the or unlock the that one. That is the because the, they are doing something which is they don't want to share or they don't want to so they will not do so that is the way the anti forensics also the lock disk in saver are used there another way is compressed file i think compressed file i need not go into detail what is compressed and all but basically its purpose is of that one is to reduce the file size a reduction means that uh, once file is compressed you can't see inside what it is if you want to see the data or application or anything is there that you have to decompress it and then it is a so when a compression is done with password so again it becomes anti forensics for decompressing like decryption you need again same tool as well as the password because whatever algorithm they have used it is it has same algorithm has to be used to decrypt it and that is the reason they require same tool and password again if you don't have those tool and password then it is very difficult to recover the data and almost as i say impossible
another anti forcing trick is the steganography and uh, it is really uh, generally i take a full lecture on steganography because that i have lot of data there but here i have to limit in a few slides okay what is steganography basically that uh, its goal is that uh, we have to hide the data or message inside other files in a way that it does not allow any even an enemy or the person is suppose on the way somebody is just tapping it to detect whether a second secret message is available or not there and this is one particular uh, marcus cohn definition i have given here so it is clearly understandable that that we have some data which is to be hidden and we don't want to share okay but if uh, there are other ways to hide but uh, it can be hidden in a such a way that its existence is also not known while we had encryption or uh, we had compression or other way that we knew the data is available there, available there but we do we are we are not able to access right data we are not able to retrieve the data in this k1 existence data is not available there okay so how it is there that uh, that uh, some details i am giving you that here data is stored in such a way that existence is totally hidden and not detectable by a general user so that is you can say that here data is hidden into data or file is hidden into file okay so one file is having data other file is carrier and it is hidden there and it can be hidden in any of the file formats because it is almost independent file formats and for uh, but it is best suited for media files that then we have this uh, audio files video files or image files so it is best suited reason my i am telling best suited is that other files definitely you can use to hide data but those files will not be usable after that one okay because you are changing some bytes here but in media files if even if you are hiding data they are pretty much usable and almost functioning the same and uh, because here zeroth byte you have a byte having 8 bits here and lsb is the bit which is uh, manipulated using the data to be hidden and that way steganography is done so media file most suitable so these files are exploited using encoding and called steganography one more thing is there that to make it much more complex to hide the data they can do one more thing is that encryption the data is to be hidden and before hiding it is encrypted and after that that encrypted data is hidden so if somebody is able to retrieve the data from steganography then encryption will be other another problem there tools many tools are available and uh, not a big thing there because i told you that uh, lsb is manipulated according to the hidden data basically you can say that uh, uh, one by bit is there in every ls which is changed so if eight uh, bytes are available so to hide one byte of the information in eight bytes you require just zero or lsb bit manipulation there because one of the bits will be go to each of the eight bytes so simple uh, it cannot be simple way that just simply you can hide there there has to be some sequence and uh, that is the issue there so how it is done here bits of the data is to be hidden into the bytes data can be encrypted also how these are done the bits are done into bytes using tools and there is some sequence which is uh, we have through the mathematical algorithm used by like uh, you know that one uh, popular algorithm is pseudo random generation that uh, through that uh, suppose i have 1000 uh, bytes available me so i can generate uh, certain number from 1 to 1000 and we can store there same uh, sequence is required that is the reason that it is much more complex 
if straight way we are having data in sequence starting from 0 1 2 3 and up to last one then anybody can have the data and we retrieve it so to make it more complex one any algorithm is used and then sequence of algorithm is determined by the by it and then data is stored there for retrieval of data definitely you need same tool because this tool only knows the method algorithm in what sequence data is just hidden there then password or encryption key encryption use all these required again oh after these all manipulation it is almost impossible to crack and retrieve the hidden data yes some methods have come that nowadays uh, through some methods we are able to have some inference whether data is hidden or not there but retrieval data is almost not possible unless you have the right tool and right uh, encryption or decryption key regarding list of tools there are many i have given a few only and uh, gfita pass tools heap hiding pictures no it is a big big list and uh, if somebody generally we can have throw that uh, if you have a student available with you like for interns you can give this task to do in c and or c plus plus that they can manipulate lsb of the each of the like that and it is so it can be done very easily another anti forensic trick which is uh, used by these uh, suspects pc with the volatile storage vitality disclax pc so what is there that uh, suppose you have a tablet there and you know tablet is having your operating system or firmware in uh, flash memory and the flash memory is also available to store data there but in these pcs flash memory is only used only for operating system for storage you don't have flash memory available it is only ram available to you so what they do is that this they connect this uh, pc with the net the tools are downloaded and after that installed and then used Okay. If in that condition you catch, you see it, probably you can have something. But here also, because these are working on uh, RAM only, anyhow system is off, you will not have any trace of the data available there at all. So these are the disk less PCs with the RAM only storage and uh, such tools if you are or systems are being used, it is even if captured is of no use we will not be able to do much in a lab till the tools are downloaded and uh, installed in ram and used from ram only there is a trick also that ram disk was there earlier that we can out of the ram we can create a ram disk and then that could be used to carry out the task and once it is done then ram disk is uh, simply gone after the when you switch off so this is one trick that uh, is there This sender is another problem that uh, or uh, wiping tools, data wiping tools. Now one trick is degaussing. Degaussing are some equipment there that uh, which generate high, very high magnetic field. Okay, and these are applicable for the magnetic storage. Magnetic storage we tell nowadays only hard disks are available and maybe. A, tapes are also being used but in, in our days when we started we had floppy disk also there starting from 9 is to then 5 quarter after that 3 and a half and it was going on anyway but all are nowadays past and no more available there but definitely that uh, using degaussing we can simply uh, make the data which is available or stored in the magnetic storage media simply useless so what do they do is that hard disk is exposed to high magnetic field and all data is simply destructed there. But because degaussers are very is of, are of very high high value and mostly people are not having with that one. So we are, we are not done that we don't know if somebody has known. Yeah, somebody, some facilities are available that are on mass scale the degaussing and all going on there. This such a facility may be available in big cities, but uh, in general that uh, if uh, suspects are using this facility are not there, but definitely it can be used. 
another one is that uh, which is generally used by them is disk wiping tools and uh, the disk wiping basically these are applicable for entire disk data also or uh, even files also so here all bytes are over data which is available in the files or hard disk it is simply overwritten by a predetermined loop and that predetermined loop can be all zeros you can say that uh, every byte is zero every byte is every every bit is zero or all the bits of a byte are one anything can be there or it could be some other way but uh, generally zeros are ones and and it is overwritten over the entire hard disk means data is overwritten then it cannot be written back through it i will say uh, because some claims have come nowadays that uh, physics can be used to retrieve the dt data even after seven time over it done that is some uh, the american some uh, they use some level that it should be seven time wiping should be done but uh, it is of no use because physics uh, through physics definitely probably they say claim they can do but they can do a bit by bit that uh, every bit they, so you can think of that if you have to retrieve one byte then eight bit you have to retrieve okay and then if your nowadays we have the uh, hard disk in uh, terabytes started anyway so you think of that what physics will do so no method is available as a automated method which can read out the overwritten or wiped data from the hard disk so we treat it simply anti forensics theoretically physical through physics they say yes they can retrieve practically not possible because it is not a few bits or few bytes or like that other ways to destruct uh, data is through shredding and all that uh, nowadays we used to have a hard cd or dvd drive for uh, shredding but uh, earlier floppies were there but nowadays uh, even hard disk shredders are also, also available so these are so also good thing that they are using that one but uh, again here that uh, what you require is that uh, you have to remove the hard disk from a system or if it can be portable one so as soon as police party goes for seizing and simply they have nearby uh, shredder available for hard disk they can put into there our shredding machine is not a small machine it is very powerful machine that uh, it takes the hard disk uh, inside and simply make it simply crush it basically anyway but if such methods are used all are anti forensics and we are not able to do much there after that totally our community is helpless in use of anti forensic activities regarding i have told about disk wiping tools and this disk disk wiping tools are available with the many of the imaging tool equipment also there but uh, besides that uh, some of the tools i have listed here these are available cc cleaner is one it is not there by the way but wipe drive so sure, delete is that you can integrate with the windows explorer there i have been using since long then autoclave this d band disk is very popular it is having lot of tools as well as the hard disk wiping tools so if anybody is interested that wiping tools are available and it could be they mostly are freeware and it can be downloaded and used just like uh, stenographic tool these are available there another area we hear data can be hidden is host protected area hpa it is uh, one part of hard disk what is there that uh, when hard disk is manufactures so they manufacture oems they make a special area in the hard disk to share to save their own data there and uh, this uh, size of this area which is uh, they protect they say hpa it is configured using ata commands many disk have size of 0 by default also that they don't use hpa at all and it was used by ata4 and uh, basic use is again as given here that the vendor is simply store their own information there and it cannot be erased by the user even if they format when on the information means simply that uh, like suppose seagate hard is there so seagate give its name own name there probably manifesting data details 
then how much is this size or cylinders or like that the such data is available there but tools are available there to you can see there that uh, here uh, a 20 gb hard disk is there then uh, 0 to 19 is the user addressable sectors there which a user can use but uh, last 1 gb is hpa which is protected by manufacturer so that is the way they do it so there are tools available there which can use the hpa to write data through ata commands and and because in general as an analyst we may not be interested in the data wattage in hpa and if somebody is hiding data there it is really difficult to guess and that is such a thing we are doing there Another area is called uh, device config overlay in hard disk. So in addition to HP, data can also be hidden into DCO also, and it was introduced with the ATA6. And you can see that way, ATA6 is uh, this DCO is after HPA. So HPA already discussed. So DCO is the other area that here tools are available and data can be turned into this also. So this is one area that these two areas HP and DCA, DCO that uh, generally in general our tools which we use uh, ready made tools for cyber forensic investigations they don't see these areas at all and in general in my life if that I, we have done that uh, around 15 to 20 years I have done on cyber forensics but I, we never try to know what is HPA and DCA and what is stored there. So this we totally ignore, but definitely if somebody is using that one, it is anti forensics and generally as a analyst, we are much more concerned if data is run there. But there is no way that it is because each and every disk we cannot go and uh, see that what is in HP and DCO, but uh, if some indication is there, that definitely we can go reach there. Then next uh, one more is there that attacks against cyber forensic tools. Already I discussed in one slide that uh, cyber forensic tools, whether it is a NKS or uh, it is a FTK from access data or any other tool like nowadays Belka soft is there. So many uh, cyber forensic tools are, some are freeware, some are commercial. So more, all of them are well known and these are being used well. And uh, as a Digital forensic analysis, for example, we heavily rely on these tools, but these tools are not free from bugs, although they are going to patch, but with the new version and all, but uh, with the new version, they add new facilities also and new bugs also. So these bugs and vulnerabilities, people are there, they are able to find these vulnerabilities and then it is published also. Once it is published, so interested one that, that immediately they write exploits or exploiting tools and they use it. And generally these exploits which are for those vulnerabilities available in the tools, they are used to manipulate the data. And what is the manipulation generally? Because when we do the task at the cyber forensic lab and they, we have retrieved data and all there. So immediately hashing tool is one of the part of that one that with each and every file or we have the hash values. So that integrity can be proven of data. So they play with the hash values and they change it. So that tomorrow if it is going to verify it fails and data may be unacceptable. That is a manipulated one, tampered one. So that is the way they attack this hypothesis tool also. And that is the reason I was telling that we should never, never use the cyber forensic workstation or our equipments online. We have to totally avoid to keep them online and if we have to upgrade them or we have to patch them or we have to install some new tools, we have to do some through them portable media like uh, portable hard disk or pen drive and all. So download from the uh, system which is already online and then have one in there and then install it on the offline workstation. Physical access is uh, one more issue there. 
you have seen i think uh, some dongles are available usb dongles are available nowadays and not only that uh, like my laptop is there though it is having biometric access through my finger even uh, some uh, apple phone are there they are nowadays using even a color of our retina also so so many things are there nowadays that physical access is through that uh, some of the control there so dongle was one only which is physical one but other one is that uh, users uh, fingerprint or uh, retina color and all uh, these are some nowadays the, these are also possible that uh, these can be configured that uh, without these this could not be used okay so in such case that uh, when your system is available there and uh, it is using dongles to without dongle it will not boot or it will not be available there and if dongle is there then it will be whole disk encryption will be to decrypted otherwise with with without dongle it will be totally encrypted so such physical access available so what happens that when some police goes they say simply remove the dongle and uh, they don't uh, so that dongle has been used there so in that case we become simply helpless because without dongle entire hard disk is encrypted and we are not able to do anything there use of dongle is not known when seizure was there and uh, many of the system or some applications will not work without the dongle because in case of cyber forensic we know that most of the tools we use for cyber forensic purpose they have dongle and uh, without dongle this tool will not work so such uh, problems comes there if dongle is not available or the particular biometric access or physical access is not available then we are totally helpless and that is the way anti forensics is done some other uh, tricks they have, uh, disable and remove usb access log usb is uh, one of the key that uh, main time we are using portable hard disk as well as the usb pen drives and all thumb drives so here for anti forensic purpose they simply disable the logs of usb activity as well as flash drives both are same almost our uh, micro sd cards also come into that category usb so for that purpose what they do is they, there is a windows sd key called usb store it is applicable for windows system only so usb store settings are deleted here and what usb store is doing is that it logs information regarding the usb devices which are connected to the computer what is there that which has the which was the computer and what is the usb make and model as well as size and date and time when it was plugged so all this information is available here yeah such things many time we do we do do it and uh, in one case because what we were given that, that these these are the data it is to be non available there it should be available some data was available in that particular system others were not there so we told that this is not available they told it should be after that we have given a list of uh, usb keys that these are the some of the list of usbs they were used there if that person is having any of those simply seize that one and same same thing was done that particular usb pen drive was provided and data was retrieved from the pen drive so such thing happens so here simply because it is known that which pen drive was connected there so simply all the storage of usb simply it is removed because we are using it to match to usb to the computer so after that this is disabled and simply data regarding which was connected or not connected is not available through um, windows uh, registry one more file is there set up api.log it is a plain text file and that is stored the list of installed usb devices and their driver also i was discussing same thing to you and uh, one way is that we can uh, remove the settings from usb store but whatever already there it will remain there new set so that is uh, for to delete existing entries you have to use a tool called cc cleaner c cleaner okay and uh, again because c cleaner is very well known anti forensic tool and existence also of it is that anti forensic so what they do is that uh, c cleaner is downloaded installed used and after that 
uninstalled and its entire trail is wiped out by them. And that is the way CCleaner is used. And that is the reason that set API log totally it is deleted. Another is that uh, disabling of Windows hibernation. Yeah, maybe that uh, some of you, many, many of you may be knowing that what is hibernation mode in Windows. Okay, purpose of hibernation mode is that uh, basically when a system is uh, being shut down, so it captures the RAM data into a file. It keeps it with you. The next time when you reboot, it takes data from the hibernation file, hyperfield.sys, and put into RAM. And that way, booting of computer is faster. That is the reason that hibernation mode is used. But indirectly, it is giving a facility to us that even if we are reaching the site to seize a computer or system there, and it is, by the way, already off. So we need not worry that we have to capture the RAM because last time boot, last boot time RAM data or last time shutdown RAM data is already available to us. So we can carry, we can have it from there itself. So that is the reason what they do is that most of these people, they simply disable Windows hibernation mode. It is off. So no RAM data is captured by the hyperfill.sys and it is not available to analyze, to analyze. Because RAM data provide lot of clues to us and uh, I have been telling that one, that through RAM data we can even have user ID, password, some of some utilities. Suppose you have used some of the mails and all and uh, some of the tools which require user ID passwords. So these are ID password because when we enter data from keyboard, it goes into RAM and from RAM it goes to this, that particular tool or application. So RAM data is having that one. Even RAM data is having encryption keys or decryption keys also available there. And if you can identify, it is very easy because uh, identification of user ID and password is very easy. And uh, I can share with you that uh, simply that uh, whatever data is available in RAM, simply we find these strings which are three or four character or more wrong, more, more size. So all these strings which are of three size three or more than three are captured there. And once it is available and we go through manually, you can simply identify that this may be user's ID available there. And next to user ID, maybe that three or four strings may be available there. Any of that uh, may be the password there. Identification and encryption key is not so easy because it is a big uh, string data and uh, but definitely, if you have some practice and all, you can find it. So this is all from my side. Any question is there, please, you can ask. I wanted to make it much more bigger, but uh, today's condition did not allow me to do. Kanti. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. No, sir. Uh... Whatever you have shared, everything was very useful and very um, means everybody was, I guess. Uh, yeah, but and questions, if there are any, uh, please. Yes, they yes, can. yes sir. Uh, we welcome um, from means uh, our our all participants to means uh, to interact with sir. Sir is having very um, he is worked very closely with certain and. Um, Ministry he is uh, very experienced. So if you have any query, anything that you want related to the NT forensics or even the uh, uh, anything about the uh, forensic itself, digital forensics, please ask. Please. So it was a really wonderful presentation. Just I wanted to ask one thing how TPM can help over here as because nowadays all the machines are coming with the TPM uh, facility. I have not <laughs> gone through TPM. Definitely this is one of that, but I do, I could not understand what is the purpose of TPM. Probably it is regarding something that uh, I don't know how much it is useful. Definitely I never tried to know about it. Frankly speaking, I never tried. Okay. But this facility, yes, I have seen nowadays it is available. 
and even some of the software they point out that TPM is not available. <laughs> I have seen that also. So where this is a uh, basically this anti forensic tool uh, for which purpose uh, these are uh, beneficial reason is that we are mostly we are for using this forensic tool for a kind of cyber crime investigation. Yeah, but anti forensic so it, tool. What's the motivation yeah, behind it? it? These are basically used by the criminals. OK, so that when the system goes for forensic investigation. They are not able to investigate it. Or if they investigate, they will not be able to find the right data from there. So that is purpose purpose there that they want to make the task of examiners much more difficult or almost impossible. You think of that somebody has used the hard this full disk encryption like uh, BitLocker and if it reaches to us, we are totally helpless. We will not be able to do anything there. So I think the uh, conflicts in the intentional cyber laws that is also a major factor which is acting like a uh, anti forensics whatever the forensic experts are doing whatever the data they are extracting the evidence they are collecting but once yeah. it is produced at least in india i'm talking about the indian court of law yeah. so there i have seen the people i mean the police uh, thanas they are basically registering the case under some those uh, british time acts they are not following <laughs> at all the these I, cyber act 2000 or maybe amended act uh, indian it act 2008 so that is, yeah. uh, I think that is uh, supporting. Uh, no, the, uh, yes, you are pretty much right. But uh, yes, I think uh, conditions are improving very fast. See, one thing is there that uh, new generation which is joining police now, they are much more competitive. I mean, uh, they have a good knowledge as well as interest also. Because I have been taking classes, so many classes for police and all, and I have gone to so many police academies. But young generation, they are well accepting everything. But if you go to the older one, mature one, definitely there is a problem. Mm -hmm. And uh, their knowledge also poor, awareness is not there. So these are problems are there. And one more thing I have noticed I can share to you that uh, mostly when a training program is there in uh, cyber forensics or investigation cyber crime, generally the person who are uh, simply uh, idle and mostly these are matured ones, they are sent to there. Because the active person, they are sent to the site. That you have to work, but these persons who don't have zero knowledge of using computer, even they don't use mobile also efficiently, and they are sent to the training. That such things we have seen there, and I have asked the person like that person was DGP of one state, and then I asked what is this happening in you? So this such problems come definitely, but it is I have seen judiciary also, the judiciary hmm. size also that I have gone to Delhi High Court many times, and. Uh, they are well aware of all these things. Mm -hmm. I really appreciate the High Court judges. Actually, most much... of the officials they are not willing to learn it now because mm -hmm. they think I mean they have just four or five yeah. years to get it. Yeah, mature, not mature. I, you are right. Matured one, they have the this one that why they should bother about all these things. They are going to retire very soon. And actually, so, cases are not being registered under the IT. That's the problem. IT yeah, because they don't know because they are not aware of IT Act. Even, what they are, are the act even they are even they are given the information because by myself had a, uh, a case that yeah. I had uh, somebody did something against uh, you know my reputation on Facebook, so I just made a case, and uh, it's, it's almost two years gone and nothing has happened. I myself you know met the uh, ADG cyber crime and uh, in my state, and uh, we did a uh, lots of effort, but still the case was you know registered under Jan se maane ki dhamki the or gali di abuse kiya but it's not like the cyber act uh, which were um, uh, more affected agar usko karte wo to so that yeah, they find i think they find themselves in cpc much more <laughs> i think that is the main reason okay sir thank you so much <laughs> but uh, definitely it is going to change very soon i think it will not go much more like this Yes, we have so many facilities created and the trainings are going on for LEAs. The entire Northeast, entire J and K, and most of the police, uh, they have their own police academies. And I have gone to many, and uh, their all recruits are going extensively. They are being trained on the cyber forensic side. But actually, those, those, those are actually being recruited. I think uh, that is only for the uh, something which is against the national national security. 
is <laughs> not for general people i mean the uh, like uh, uh, rndw or ib or the nsa what they, uh, what they are doing is just only for the special cases for special uh, or high class uh, people or the maybe the pmo or somewhere uh, something uh, similar to that so it's not See, uh, applicable to one, one more thing i i would like to tell you that uh, police whatever is doing it is the, this investigation for their own and forensic this investigation whatever they forensically or not it is not acceptable to court okay whatever labs find and this lab i state or this central labs only that is going to the finding of the to the court okay but yes application of which act to be applied it is probably with them and i think these applications or if goes to court even court can change that uh, this should be applied there it is not a big thing but definitely some awareness is required and uh, how to use that also required but, but probably their awareness level is very low or they are simply totally ignorant about it and it is really problem i will say one thing more here once because police is coming that uh, that our police is definitely there is a big problem and uh, not only police i have worked with uh, this income tax also state office also that is um, many things are there even ncrb and uh, what is happening there that uh, once a case is there they don't have in a portable hard disk simple hard disk where which we can use in the lab for uh, storing the data it is not available and simply they will ask the suspect itself to provide the orders so <laughs> this is a really bad situation that we have to depend on those uh, uh, suspects for uh, having all these hard disk i mean so that is the situation i don't know these are given uh, money or not for that purpose or this money is utilized somewhere but definitely this is reality okay sir thank you so much right any other question is there so sir um, i would like to thank you again for your uh, time and effort that you have given uh, to us and uh, i think your session was uh, really very um, useful for all the participants who want to learn and explore the digital forensics uh, domain and i would like to thank on behalf of cdat noida sir thank you so much and we are looking forward to your next session uh, on mobile forensics thank you so sure. much sir okay sir thanks kanti and thanks everybody we will meet again yes sir okay yes. next sir thank you so much thanks bye bye thank you I have sent uh, the exercise for cyber check suit uh, and features of cyber check suit uh, that I have covered in today's session and uh, I have requested Dr. Lakshmi Kalyani ma'am uh, to share the slides um, of her session and I'll also send request to uh, sir Omvir Singh sir to share um, uh, his presentation and once I'll get I'll share with all of you and uh, I'll share the Uh, link for the tomorrow but i want to add one more thing that uh, if you have seen uh, the schedule tomorrow we have one session for yoga that is mandatory session uh, um, according to the atal fdp um, uh, you can say scheme or policy they follow so i would like to request all of you we have one session from tomorrow um, tomorrow morning that is scheduled from 7:30 So please um, join tomorrow 7:30 sharp so that we can do one more uh, session related to the uh, means meditation or yoga and uh, after that we will have the technical session. So I request all of you to join uh, the session and uh, one more thing don't worry about the attendance if there is any problem you can mail uh, to me or you can communicate through the whatsapp if i am not able to reply then and there i'll see and i'll correct uh, if there is any problem in your attendance and uh, um, once i'll get the experts um, content or slides i'll share uh, with all of you
any question any query or uh, we can just end uh, tomorrow uh, today session question, madam yes sir madam uh, how can we access this recording madam okay we are recording uh, each and every day so all all the session we are record, recording and uh, um we'll share with all of you uh, maybe through the youtube link uh, or because the size of the recordings are very means uh, quite um, in gb so uh, we'll see if we can uh, share uh, in, in session wise we can uh, just split session wise and uh, share it through the uh, youtube links okay okay ma'am thank you thank you so much but we'll share whatever is possible we'll share that that is why we are recording all the sessions um so that participants can see better on and if, if there is any query or if anything uh, you can ask uh, otherwise we can just end to uh, today's session and if you have any feedback actually the feedback is uh, on uh, last day but meanwhile if you want to uh, give any feedback then then also uh, you can give help uh, we'll try to incorporate into our training program our uh, development program faculty development program so please uh, join tomorrow's session morning session it is i know very early 7:30 but uh, as per uh, all the um, atal fdp programs the schedule is, schedule is like that only tomorrow um, 7:30 uh, all of you are requested to join please ma'am the size which you have sent uh, through email yes, that uh, that is for our own practice or you want uh, some kind of uh, reply i mean no no, no 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 that is not assignment that is just uh, so that you can practice means okay. if you if you want to means practice uh, on your machine uh, so that is just a uh, exercise given from our side that you can just try to find out uh, the answer of the given questions okay okay and, uh, this is just only for the exercise purpose there is no ass assessment or assignment nothing like okay. that the final assessment uh, will be done after the 5 days i mean the after the completion uh, of the yeah, workshop at the end of the uh, yes yes at the end of the um, uh, fdp last day we have one um, post that is that is actually mc there will be a, only mcq question one uh, right option you have to select uh, and uh, 20 questions uh, uh, you will get uh, 20 mcq questions and uh, uh, you have to score at least okay. 60 percent okay okay ma'am thank you okay any uh, pavan kumar sir ah uh, yes ma'am Is it audio visual session tomorrow? Sir, sorry, sir. Please. Is it audio visual session tomorrow morning? Yoga. Ah, uh, yoga is sorry, sir. Is it audio visual session? I mean, we need to switch on our video camera. Mm, yes, sir. If you can, uh, if you can, yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, regarding uh, this uh, Teams, Microsoft Teams. Eh? Sorry, yeah. Your voice is not clear, sir. Okay, I'm uh, using your Bluetooth. Eh? Just now, I, I will switch it over. Uh, is it audible now, ma'am? Yes, yes, yes. Yes. Yeah. this microsoft teams is accepting only one uh, email id that is uh, uh, which is a standard uh, registered mail id no Hello? no actually um, all of you um, we are <laughs> means uh, uh, we yeah we thought that all of you yeah. use the same registered email id the email id that you have used for the registration if there is any change if you are not using the same email id then uh, then please try it. we have three remaining uh, three uh, days um means uh, three more days okay more. okay so you please try to use the uh, email id that you have uh, used at the time of registration and in case if there is any change please update us so that uh, we can mark your attendance 
Okay, it is taking uh, the. I mean, uh, as a guest, it is taking. If I try to register it, uh, what is it saying is it is already been registered. Uh, you try with the same uh, mail ID. That is my personal mail ID. No, sir. Actually, we, um, there is an option in MS Team that uh, we can ask the user to register before <coughs> before attending the class. Um, before attending okay. any meeting, they need to register. But uh, that provision we have not given here in our uh, meeting links. Uh, anybody, everyone, there is one uh, uh, setting is there. If anyone if means is open to join, but um, today. Uh, there was one option that was enabled that uh, administrator of the meeting will admit the participants, but tomorrow onwards uh, we'll remove that uh, setting. In, 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 okay, in, okay. No waiting in the lobby. Anybody can anytime join. Okay, okay, madam. Okay. So. Okay. Thank you, madam. Now we, uh, we can leave the meet. All of you can leave the meeting and. Uh, all of you are requested to join 7th Antisha. Hello, ma'am. Can I audible? Can I audible to you, ma'am? Hello, may I audible? Yes, it's audible. Can proceed. Am I audible? Yes, it's your audible. Uh, actually, madam, uh, sir, I need to the uh, recording lectures of yesterday. Can you send you that uh, link for access that one? Actually, we have to revise some interesting topic for the uh, practical session out. And so we need the recording, recorded lectures. Can you, can you share this uh, recording? Hello? Hello, sir. Hello. Can I audible?